In this video, I will teach you how to rewrite logarithmic functions using the properties of logarithms. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.12. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Here are the three properties of logarithms that I really need you to memorize. The log of x times y can be written as the log of x plus the log of y. For example, the log base 2 of 5x could be written as the log base 2 of 5 plus the log base 2 of x. Next we have the quotient property. The log of x divided by y can be rewritten as the log of x minus the log of y. For example, the log of y over 4 could be written as the log of y minus the log of 4. And finally, there is the power property. The log base b of x to the n power could be written with that n out in the front. So for example, if we have the log base 7 of 3 to the x power, we could put that x out in the front and we get x times the log base 7 of 3. Notice that all of these properties work in both directions. So for the product property, if we are given the sum of two logs with the same base, you could rewrite that sum as a single log of a product. If you are given the difference of two logs, you can rewrite that as a single log of x divided by y. And if you are given a log expression with uh, something multiplying in the front, you can take the thing that's in the front and put it up as the exponent. Example one, for each of the following, write an equivalent expression by condensing each expression to a single logarithm. Part A, the sum of two logs can be written as the single log of a product. So in this case, we would write log base four of x times y. And that's the answer. For part B, we have the difference of two logs. We can write this as the single log of a quotient. It's going to be the first number divided by the second number. So this would be the same as the log base 3 of 5 over z. Quick side lesson. If I have more than two terms, a bunch of logs which all have the same base, and they are being added or subtracted, any combination of addition and subtraction, we can rewrite all of this as a single log in one step. The fact that there is a subtraction involved means there will be a fraction involved. There are four terms, so we will have four factors in the quotient. It's just a matter of how do you know which factors will be in the numerator and which factors will be in the denominator. Any factor that comes from a positive term will be in the numerator. Any factor that comes from a negative term will be in the denominator. So I see the log of a. This is a positive term, so the a factor will be in the numerator. Log b, this is a negative term, so the b factor will be in the denominator. Log c is positive, so the c ends up in the numerator and the log d is a negative term, so the d will end up in the denominator. So back to part c, I see three terms, so I can rewrite this as a single log, and uh, they wrote log base 10, but uh, if I don't write the 10, it's understood to be 10, so I think I will not write the 10. The fact that I see minus signs means I will definitely have a quotient involved, so I'm going to set up my fraction bar. However, the first term is positive. So this x factor will end up in the numerator. The second term is negative. So the factor of 5 will be in the denominator. The third term is also negative. So the z factor will end up in the denominator. Part D has two terms to it. I would love to combine these into a single term, but before I do, I need to take this three that's in the front and move it to the exponent 
using the power property. So uh, I can rewrite this as log base 2 of x to the third power. And then I'm going to bring down the minus log base 2 of y. And now I can combine these into a single log base 2. The subtraction tells me that it's going to be the quotient of x to the third power over y. This 2 in the front needs to be moved to the exponent before I can rewrite as a single log. So we will have log base 7 of a squared minus, we will move this 5 to the exponent. So we will have log base 7 of b to the fifth power. This one doesn't have anything in the front, so I can just put log base 7 of 4. Now I can rewrite these all as a single log base 7. The fact that there is a minus sign involved means that we will have a quotient. The first term is positive, so the a squared will be in the numerator. The second term is negative, so the b to the fifth power will end up in the denominator. The third term is positive, so the 4 will end up in the numerator. Um, I would rather put the 4 in the front. Quick side lesson. What is log base 2 of 8? A logarithm is the exponent that turns the first number into the second number. 2 to the third power is 8. So log base 2 of 8 is 3. So what is the log base 5 of 5? That's 1, because 5 to the 1 power is 5. Because of this, say if I had a 7 just sitting there, minding its own business. If I wanted to for some reason, I could write log base 3 of 3 next to it, and I have not changed the value of the expression. This expression is equivalent to simply 7, because the log base 3 of 3 is 1, and 7 times 1 is still 7. Of course, um, this could be the log base 6 of 6. Um, these could be anything as long as they match. So going back to part f, we really want to combine these into a single expression, but the 2 doesn't even have a log with it. Well, we can fix that based on the side lesson that I just showed you. Um, to make it match the second term, we can take that 2, um, but next to it, we can go ahead and put the log base 6 of 6 without changing anything. And then we have plus the log base 6 of x. Now we can proceed as usual. We can take this 2 and move it to the exponent of the 6. So on the next step, we will have the log base 6 of 6 squared plus the log base 6 of x. Now we can combine these into a single log using multiplication. So we can write the log base 6 of uh, 6 squared is 36, so let's go ahead and put 36x. And this would be the final answer. Example 2, which of the following expressions is equivalent to log base 3 of x squared over y? Let's just check them one at a time. Uh, let's start with option A and see what happens. So we could combine these into a single log uh, using the quotient rule because of the subtraction. It would be 2x over y. Um, that is not a match. For option B, we could distribute this 2, and we would get 2 log base 3 of x minus 2 log base 3 of y. To combine these to make a single log expression, we would have to take these 2's and make them the exponents of x and y. So on the next step, we would have log base 3 of x squared 
and then minus log base three of y squared. Then we could write a single log using the quotient rule. It would be x squared over y squared. So close, except this would be y squared. So not a match. For option C, we would put the two as the exponent. So we would get log base three of, whoops, of x squared, and then we have the minus log base three of y. Then we could write a single log term using the quotient rule. So the log base three of x squared over y. Ah, that's it. So the answer is C. Example three, the function f of x equals log of six x is a horizontal dilation of the function g of x equals log x. Show that f can be written as a vertical translation of g with f of x equal to g of x plus k, where k is a constant. We can expand this expression using the product rule. The log of six times x can be written with two terms. We can write this as the log of six plus the log of x. Uh, I'm just going to reverse the order of these. Now we have this. So what we have here is f of x equals uh, log x is g of x. And guess what? Log six is a constant. We could put this into our calculator and get some decimal, but what matters is that this is a constant. Uh, we can call it k, and we have a match. Be careful. For full credit, you must define k, like this. k equals log six. Here's a fourth property I need you to memorize. This is the change of base property, which says that the log base b of x can be rewritten as the quotient of two logs. So I'm switching to this a. This base a could be anything as long as it is positive and not a one. Uh, but this could be a 10 or e or seven, whatever you, you like. To help me remember which thing goes in the numerator and which thing goes in the denominator, notice that the base b is a subscript. The b is low. So it won't surprise you that the b ends up in the denominator, low. So the thing that is low stays low, and the other thing goes high. Example four, let f of x equal the log base four of x and let g of x equal the log base nine of x. Show that f is a vertical dilation of g by finding the value of k such that f of x equals k times g of x. First, let's copy down what we were given. f of x equals log base four of x. In the end, we need to rewrite this in terms of g. g is log base nine. so Somehow we need to get a log base nine in here. We need to change the base. So of course we will use the change of base formula. We can rewrite any log as the quotient of two logs. And as we do that, we can use whatever base we want. So I'm gonna write two logs, but this time I'm going to write log base nine. Okay. Um, so it's just a matter of where do we put the four and where do we put the x? The four is low, so the four stays low. It goes in the denominator. The x goes in the numerator. Remember, g of x is log base nine of x. g of x is just this part right here. So I would like to separate this out and write it off to the side. Pulling the log base nine of x off to the side, f of x can be rewritten as one over log base nine of four times log base nine of x. But one over log base nine of four, this is a constant. There are no variables here. I could put this whole 
expression in my calculator and get some decimal. This is just a constant. So we can rewrite this. If we call the constant k, we have f of x equals k times log base 9 of x. But log base 9 of x is g of x. So we have f of x is equal to k times g of x. And that's exactly what we were trying to show. Be careful. For full credit, you must define k like this. Make sure somewhere you write k equals 1 over log base 9 of 4. The natural logarithm function. The logarithm with base e is called the natural logarithm. So log base e of x is written as ln x. Natural log is what you will see most often next year in calculus, so get comfortable with it. Example 5. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to 3 times natural log x minus 4 natural log y? We can take these numbers in the front and move them to the exponent of the x and the exponent of the y using the power rule. So we would get natural log x to the third power minus natural log y to the fourth power. Then we could combine these into a single log term using the quotient rule. It will be the natural log of x to the third power over y to the fourth power. So the answer is A. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. Or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.